Hey, this is Tyler T. Jack, Survival, Survival Dispatch. What are the best books? What should I buy? What book should I get? I see that question all the time. Okay, I'm gonna get you started on a library, but it's up to you to build what you really need. So stick with me and I'll show you what I have. Okay, books. I was thinking of content, like, Coming up with content for a channel this big, with so many things that have already been created, there's nothing left that's new. But there's my variation of the old things. And that's kind of where I'm at. I wanna show you the things that I learned or picked up along the way when I walked the path that I walked. So, having said that, in no particular order, these are the books that were sitting in my room. Because these are the books that I will buzz through to try to fill my head with knowledge. So first off, just because it's up top, Bushcraft by Morse Kohansky. Uh, Morse was a instructor for about 40 years up in the Boreal Forest. Um, so if you're on the top of the planet, this is the, this is the book to buy first. Bushcraft, Outdoor Skills and Wilderness Survival by Morse Kohansky. It's not Kochansky, it's Kohansky. Um, it's got a lot of really good diagrams. It has uh, excellent explanations in it. It's straight and to the point. It talks about why they did the things that they do. There's a lot of science in it. Um, simple things like the fact that uh, polymer plastic will let heat pass through it more so than glass. Why does this matter? Well, if you're building a super shelter, you want to make it out of plastics, not glass or it won't work um there's other sciences other science explanations because he wants to be very scientific in the application of the knowledge that's here everything from bundles to how to break off sticks without a hatchet to how to uh, make sure that there are the fires dead out so that you don't leave something that spreads and causes a forest fire how to make traps how to make all sorts of bushcraft related items. If there's a book that's bushcraft, it's this book and it's Ray Mears book. I'll show you in a minute. So if you wanna make things or create things, these are the two books to grab. Um, how, to, how to pick the right kind of ax handle, how to sharpen axes, what else we got? Where to put your ax, how to not hurt yourself, how to keep from hitting yourself in the leg. Right here's a perfect example why we don't let little kids use small axes. We wanna use large axes so they hit the ground or we kneel down so that when we're swinging them, we don't hit ourselves in the knee. Lots of deep knowledge and things that you only learn in the field have been put into this book. Uh, shelters, cups, knots, food, the moose, baskets, I didn't even touch the tip of this. There's a ton of knowledge in this book. This should be a staple, a core book, one of the main ones you get. Okay, what else we got? Snow Walker's Companion, also a Northern Boreal type book. Oh, there's a knife sharpening thing. So, uh, Karamat, uh, Karamat Wilderness Ways up in Canada made a bunch of these little pamphlets, and all they are is the detailed knowledge on a specific topic like knife sharpening. They taught a lot up in colleges, and you can take their courses up there. So there is a way to buy just the skill set that you want. And they gave me a bunch of these when I was filming with them a couple years up in Canada. It was like February before Corona hit. So that's that. Snow Walker's Companion by Garrett and Alexandria Conover. These are a little harder to get a hold of for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if they were in print anymore. There is the ISBN number right there. Um, this is everything you need to know about, let's call it crunchy snow backcountry travel, below freezing backcountry travel. It gets into some of the uh, history of the shapes of the snowshoes, why they shaped it, uh, and, and it kind of goes from northern Canada and works down into southern Canada because the snow conditions were different. So the, the snowshoes ended up being different. They end up specializing in the area that they're from and that's important because you have, if you have an environment that's similar to that area, it'll tell you what snowshoe shape to pick. It goes into the building of snowshoes and skis and toboggans and shelters and fires and tents. And it's also a really good read because they went out for months at a time and traveled in the backcountry. I don't know if this was in the 80s or the 70s, a long time ago, maybe even early 90s, I don't know. Point is they went out and did this on the regular, 
worked out a lot of the bugs. And they tell the story of that learning process in the book. So it's not just a dictionary of information. It's also a story that you can kind of follow along and learn things from. There's some pictures of the people that they ran into. Uh, and there's some weight loss pictures and talking about living off of uh, the, the birds up there and the food they brought and wearing out their moccasins. Um, sorry, mucklucks. Anyway, Snow Walker's Companion. In the back of the Snow Walker's Companion, uh, before I get too far, they've got measurements for patterns so that you can build mucklucks and anoraks and tents and a lot of really cool stuff. That is really cool all by itself. Right there is the measurements to build soles. And uh, there's also a really good video. I'm just gonna throw this out because I'm thinking about it. Uh, Lure of the North has, they do this nowadays. If you wanna take a trip, look up Lure, L-U-R-E L -U -R -E, of the North on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Send them a message. Um, you may have seen her on Alone this last season. She did phenomenal. And um, anyway, they've got some really good video footage of how to build a lot of this stuff if pictures are not enough. All right. I'm not gonna get through this very fast. Ultimate Guide to Wilderness Living, Surviving with Nothing but Your Bare Hands and What You Would Find in the Woods by John McPherson and Jerry McPherson. Okay, both Les Stroud and um, Cody Lindeen put a forward in this. Both Les Stroud and Cody Lindeen learned from these guys. So if you ever watch a TV show and you're like, that survivalist is phenomenal, who taught him? This is who taught him, right? So the people that wrote this book, know their craft they go very deep into primitive skills when i was reading through this book they just kind of go fire shelter right they just kind of go down the list they talk about bow drills hand drills the techniques they use the woods that they use it's really good for sierra nevada's nevada's southern utah i'm sorry southern idaho parts of utah kind of that middle desert area if that's your environment this is the the book that you want to read right goes into flint napping cordage um, percussion, antler, all sorts of fun stuff in there. Um, that's another task you can do with your kids. I'll get to that another day. They have shelters, how they built shelters, arrows, and basically how to do all of this stuff primitively from scratch. So you go out with nothing, create what you need, and live off the land. A lot of work, but if that's something that you're interested in, if you want the knowledge of how to do it with no kit, this is more primitive, less bushcraft. This is the book you should be getting right here. Okay, Outdoor Skills, Outdoor Survival Skills by Larry Dean Olson. Arguably, this book started all of these other books to one extent or another indirectly. I'm not trying to say Larry Olson started it all, but Larry Olson started it all. Not literally. So Larry Olson, back in the 60s, was a BYU instructor. He taught uh, primitive survival or I would call it experimental archaeology because that's what it's called. And in the process of finding Paiute or Fremont or whatever Native American people tools, they took them, studied them, figured out what they were made of, recreated them, and resurrected a skill set that was lost. So understanding that, that was how this book came apart, came about. Um, this book is similar in the skill set to the Wilderness uh, Ultimate Guide to Wilderness Living, but it's older. This seventh edition has a ton of other stuff that's not Larry Olson specific, but it's in the same genre as far as skill sets are concerned. Uh, that extra information was added by Christopher Nurgis. I probably slaughtered your, name, your last name, Chris. I'm sorry. I talked to him online. Good dude. Has a deep knowledge. So Larry Olson taught for years. He passed away here a few years ago. I did an interview with him. I'm going to post it when it's done. It's been sitting in my to-do box for a while. Um, I'm looking forward to that one because it was right before he passed away. So this book, if you're interested in it, set the original standard. There's a lot of, this edition has a lot of added information into it. It's all primitive skills, edibles, foods, things you can eat, ways to live off the desert, fishing weirs, spears, all sorts of fun like that. This is another staple. I think if you're gonna buy four books, without digging too deep. These are the four books to get right there. Okay, I gotta move a little faster. Uh, House of Rain, this is more a, I'm, I am reading this because I wanna understand the native peoples that created these skill sets. So this is a little deeper dive into the history and archeology span of it, not so much a specific survival book. Check that out if you're interested. 
Stephen Ranella, okay, the man made a phenomenal book. I'm usually kind of hesitant and I'm like, okay, you're gonna write a survival book. What are you gonna put in there that wasn't in another book? He loaded it up with stuff that I didn't even think of because the man has field experience. Stephen Ranella, you know your crap. So having said that, he has a lot of knowledge that is, is gonna be phenomenal for hunters and hunting survival. Kits to pack, equipment to grab, things that you should purchase and carry with you in those kits if you're filming or hunting or ex uh, spending extended times in the backcountry with wall tents and those type of things. It's kind of like if you spend a lot of time jeeping, there's certain parts that are gonna break. If you spend a lot of time in wall tents, there's certain parts that are gonna break. He addresses all that stuff. He addresses uh, the basics and then he gets advanced in a lot of stuff. He repeats some stuff that's known but he adds a lot of knowledge that I haven't seen in other books. And I can't say that about a lot of books. So this is worth getting. Nobody's sponsored me for any of this. Again, I just bought this one. So get that, get that book if you have a chance. Okay, another Boris Kohansky book, Basic Safe Travel and the Boreal Survival Handbook. This is more structured knowledge base. When you start teaching, oh, and Morse signed it for me. It's a good man, he will be missed. Um, when you start teaching, if you want a curriculum or you want it to have more structure than let's just go out and play in the dirt, this is the book to buy. So when you get to that level where you're ready to start teaching the people that, the things that you know, buy this Basic Safe Travel and Boreal Survival Handbook because it's very structured and it just gives you a list. You're gonna make this thing show these things. And it's a good reminder because you forget stuff. Once you have enough knowledge in your head, you get to the point where you don't know if you addressed it this time or last time. Anyone who's taught knows exactly what I'm talking about. So a metric ton of information. There's a lot of science in this. Uh, how many centimeters it's required in clothing in order to stay warm at specific temperatures. How much uh, fuel is burnt on a metabolic basis in order to stay certain temperatures. How many days you can go without fuel. A lot of really specific deep knowledge is had in this and some really good graphics again, like the, the graphics that you guys have made up there at Caramat are super impressive because you can look at them and just visualize them very well. Okay, get that one. Okay, the Boyer's Bible is a Bible on how to make bows. Someone took some world-class professionals, put them together and put all their knowledge in one book. A lot of the videos that you see on YouTube, a lot of the tutorials and stuff that you, that you see that are out there, the knowledge came from this book, a vast majority, not all of them before you guys freak out, but an absolute majority of the people that are making primitive bows got their knowledge from these group of people. Stephen Allelay, awesome guy, friend of mine, has a great bow video set. You can order from him on DVD. Um, some of these other guys I've met, I don't know all of them. Anyway, if you want to make prune of bows and arrows, this is the book to grab, right? It starts out in the beginning, giving, giving some stories about hunting and talking about how they come up with their craft. It shows you how to pick wood and growth rings and what to do to create a stave. Once you've got a stave, it goes into planting it and tillering and just goes deep into the wood on how to make stuff. It's got phenomenal explanations. It shows you how to taper. This is the tiller right there so that your limbs bend up the same on each side. And that way you can measure what amount of poundage you have at how many inches of draw. Um, it is a deep dive. There are some primitive bow making techniques. The majority of the stuff in this is really advanced primitive, right? And primitive mean first, not lesser. So when I say primitive, I mean first skills. The people that are living nowadays have the same amount of knowledge as the people that lived back when those bows were being created, as far as intelligence is concerned. But they had different tools and different stuff to work with, so they had, they did brilliant things with wood, right? So anyway, if you're interested in making bows, you wanna get, uh, this guy always going, all the way going down into glue. This is how to make glue and sinew from, well, how to make glue from sinew and how to pull sinew from uh, animal, deer, elk, legs and back strap. There's a big cord that's on this back strap that you end up pulling. Um, that's a huge dump of information. If you're any kind of interested in this, 
the, tr the traditional Boyer's Bible. There's multiple volumes of it. This is volume one. Start there. If you can get your way through this thing, man, you're a better man than me because it's got a lot of information. Okay. Um, Ray Mears. I got to do a Ray Mears book. The, the man's TV presence and ability to teach and knowledge base is largely responsible for me being here. There are tons of other people that came before me that I've been super interested in learning from. He's one of them. I've never met him. Hopefully I will someday. He, uh, he has a bunch of books. Some of them are crap. Some of them are great. This is a great one. The crap ones are just basically pictures of adventures he did on TV and you can just watch TV and get the same thing. But if you want to learn from him, the Ray Mears Outdoor Survival Handbook, a guide to the resources and materials available in the wild and how to use them for food, shelter, warmth, and, and, and navigation. This one is a good book to grab. I'm gonna throw this up to you real quick. Okay, it's a little bit of an older book, but keeping that in mind, it's gonna have some older equipment in it, older tents and stuff. The principles are the same, even though the technology may have advanced slightly. <clears throat> so instead of buying this old military water bottle with that quart volume, know that that's about the volume you need with a modern day water bottle, unless you wanna get an old one. It goes into animals, shelter building, fire starting, uh, milk bag. This is going to be for pulling sap. Nope, suspended matter. This milk bag is a, a particulate removing bag. It's like a pre-filter. Um, this is the sap removal right there. So you can get sugar knots, plant identification, scat identification, hand drills, bow drills, uh, carrying things, making baskets. Got a lot of really good pictures in this and it talks about what type of uh, thorns to, to grab. These are all prim primitive fishing hooks. Um, he is really good at making primitive fishing hooks. A lot of the primitive fishing I do is either with the spear or by hand. Um, this is more complicated, but it's very interesting and something fun to do when you do it. You just can't always do it because it's not always legal and you got to make sure that where you're going, you do something legal. Talk about how to cook fish and it goes through the seasons, autumn, long fires, uh, creating uh, tanning hides, winter. That's right, it's split up by seasons, different ways to create shelter, fire. Great book, Ray Mayer's Outdoor Survival Handbook. Okay, Ishii in Two Worlds. Okay, the last Native American, wild Native American that we know of uh, was Ishii, if I remember correctly. He died in 1911 and he walked out of the wild uh, just a few years prior to that. He was living with his mother and si sister. They died or they disappeared. I can't remember the exact details. Ishii was given housing, housing at a museum and a place to stay. And in exchange, he taught them uh, part of his language, where he lived, the tools that he used. So he is our last and final connection to wild Native Americans who had the knowledge set. So having said that, um, this is a good book. It's his story and it's about the knowledge and things that he learned. But inside of it contains a ton of primitive knowledge. Some of the uh, two-pronged wooden salmon harpoons he used. Uh, toggles for the salmon harpoon. The fact that he had a trap that was made out of dog bane and used for deer kind of blew my mind. I know it's possible, but I never had seen anyone do it. He also used a deer head decoy. He, Ishii is where we get the Ishii stick for flint napping or for pressure flaking uh, final arrowheads. Um, ton of phenomenal knowledge that can be gained from this book if you're interested in deep diving where the primitive knowledge came from. It's called Ishii in Two Worlds. Okay, I'm gonna throw a final plug. There's a company that I have been working with recently. Uh, it's called Survivalpedia. They have, they sell knowledge. I'm a big proponent of knowledge. Anyone that is interested in gaining knowledge, selling knowledge, receiving knowledge, that's, I'm all about that. So having said that, they, these are some of the books they put out recently. Uh, Survival Sanctuary, one of the co-authors is a friend of mine. This one I like because it's got a lot of really cool projects that you can MacGyver your way into post SHTF. So it's, I like the idea of this company in that 
you can create a knowledge storage base and while it's ideal to learn and practice before something bad happens if you don't have that ability you can put a shelf full of these things and if the power goes out and whatever you need to start assembling a solar array or create a greenhouse assuming that you've got the equipment for it this is the instructions on how to make it so while it's ideal to have all the knowledge in your head and just know this stuff and practice this stuff pragmatically that's not realistic for a lot of people so what's the solution the solution is build up a pile or a good library that you can have access to learn it as you can and one of the solutions is survivopedia.com um, they have survival sanctuary survival MD this is basically what to do when there's no doctor there is a book called what to do when there's no doctor this is a more MD approach to that perspective. These two I haven't read yet. They're new to me. I want to check them out. Uh, practical medicine for every household home doctor and the doctor's book of survival home remedies. These are, this topic is interesting to me and I'm not going to give you a review on these books because like I said, I haven't read these. I've read these two. They have got some great information in them and I'm going to read these other two as I get time. Okay, I hope this is valuable to you. This is a really long video and I just dumped a ton of information. If any of those books are something you're interested in, drop it into Google. I tried to show the names and the, <clears throat> the authors of every one of them. If you wanna see these books, go to survivopedia.com and if there's books that you suggest that I look, cause I'm still learning, Leave those down in the comments. You got any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. All right, guys. Appreciate it.